PTP OG practicing the presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you. Good morning to you. I pray that you are doing well, that you had a great evening on last night, that you've woken up this woken up, I should say, this morning, refreshed and ready to go. We're glad to have you on board with us. It is Wednesday, the 13th, no, the 14th, excuse me, of October. 2020 and uh god is good amen we're alive we're well we're awakened by his presence by his spirit amen today is a good day amen and we're gonna have a good day in the lord it is actually pretty sunny right now in pittsburgh over the last few days couple of days it's been a little bit rainy a little bit dreary a little bit foggy uh, but I don't see much fog out there today, so it looks pretty good. What is it like in your neck of the woods? I don't know, but I hope that uh, your weather is doing good as well. So how are you guys doing today? Oh, good to see you, Orlando. What's going on, man? <laughs> good to see you, bro. It, it's who? Oh, man, it's my sister... Uh, my sister Wanda, my, my sister-in-law, uh, birthday today. Wanda, her birthday is today. She's probably not on. She's probably working this morning. But Wanda, if you're watching this later on, we love you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Amen. Everybody say happy birthday to Wanda. Maybe she can see it later in the comments uh, as she uh, looks at this uh, video later on. Today, we're looking at Proverbs chapter 24 and, I'm sorry, 25. We moved into chapter 25. We're looking at chapter 25, and we're starting with verse number four. Starting with verse number four, chapter 25 of the book of Proverbs, and we're looking at verse number four and five. The Bible says, take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Today, we're speaking from the subject, establishing the throne, establishing the throne. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up once again this morning in a special way. We thank you uh, Lord, for just the gift of life that you present to us every day, Lord, you do this. And it's amazing. And we thank you. Oh, Lord, we long to see you and long to come close and near you. Uh, we know that day is coming soon. But until then, Lord, we will hold on to your word. We will listen to your word. We will apply your word in our lives. Now, Lord, please give us this day our daily bread in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Establishing the throne. So this is an interesting passage, uh, and I love the way it puts it, quite frankly, the subject matter at hand this morning. It is talking about establishing a throne, specifically a righteous type of throne. How does one do this? Well, uh, Solomon how does one set up a successful run at leadership? How does one set up uh, 
a right standing, non corrupt uh, organization or administration? How, how, how does how does he or she do that? How do we establish a uh, awesome, successful uh, leadership that will uh, live on, that will not be canceled out, that will not be cut down in the middle of its <laughs> of its uh, tenure? How do we do that? Well, Solomon tells us here by using a great analogy here in verse four, he says, take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the refiner. Why does he use this? It's an incredible uh, picture, if you would, a word picture here of a refiner, a a metallurgist, if you will, who will seek to get the raw ore of silver and you know when you see silver in its raw form like many other metals it's got a lot of junk on it a lot of dross is what they call it on it a lot of uh unwanted material (laughs) i will say all right that is connected to the actual silver it's almost like these things are clinging to the silver in order to gain some advantage because the silver is so precious right and so this these uh these uh dross this this uh unwanted material is just kind of clinging to the ore of the silver and in order to get it off what to get the silver in its purest form you have to burn it you have to to put it in a refiner's fire so that you can separate them so that you can separate the silver from the unwanted material, right? That's called the dross that winds up at the bottom, okay? And then you have left with you the pure, uh, uh, you know, reflective silver that now you can make a cup or a bowl or whatever it is that you want to make with it. And so Solomon uses this image, he uses this metallurgic image for us to understand something that when you are uh, putting together a leadership role, when you gain a position of authority, uh, a position of leadership, a position of rulership, if you become a king, your kingdom and its success and its longevity is fully dependent upon whether or not you get the wrong or the unwanted materials out of the leadership. So what is the lesson? As a refining scum and foreign materials corrupt silver and make it unfit for forming a beautiful vessel, so the scum and foreign material, if you will, of wicked persons, of corrupt individuals, of liars and cheaters will pull down a government, will pull down a kingdom, will pull down leadership. For a king to have a glorious and prosperous reign for the benefit of his people, he must, a queen, she must purge away all the dross of ambitious, evil, and foolish people trying to get in her cabinet or in his cabinet. The truth is that the power and the riches of civil government often attracts psychophants Covetous men, lazy fools, seditious men, traitors, and unprincipled tyrants. In other words, people who really don't want to do the real work to get the position, they oftentimes see this power and they'll jump on board trying to hitch a ride. Hmm. Because they know that no real Righteous organization would bring them in and actually vote them in office. So they ride the coattails of some king or some uprising ruler, some great leader. And his kingship, his leadership covers their corruption, their corruptness. If they are allowed to remain in office. The trustworthiness of the leader and his delegated authority is compromised. And what God intended for 
the safety of prosperity and of the community and of the kingdom becomes the enemy and the destroyer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we see this today. We see this everywhere today where people are just hitching rides. I'm talking about people who aren't worth a dime hitching rides on powerful people's coattails in leadership. Are you all with me today? And it's found out that these people are, you know, just are not really good. They're not particularly intelligent. They're not smart. They're not good listeners. They're horrible counselors. Lord have mercy. You got to get rid of them if you're going to have a righteous kingdom. So the point number one is this. Obvious foolishness and wickedness must be removed from positions of power. If you're going to establish a righteous throne, if you're going to establish a righteous leadership, if you're going to establish a righteous administration, a righteous government, a righteous authority on this planet, the first thing you've got to do when you get in office is remove obvious foolishness and wickedness from positions of power. You cannot have fools in positions of power. You cannot have people who don't believe in God, so to speak, in positions of power. You cannot have people who don't believe in your leadership in positions of power. You cannot have people who don't care about people in positions of power. You cannot have people who are only concerned for their self uh, benefit in positions of power. You cannot have people who aren't truly willing to serve, but only want to serve themselves in positions of power. I know I'm talking to somebody. Notice with me, Proverbs 14 verses 34 and 35. Here's what the Bible says. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. Mercy. At least we hope his wrath is against somebody who's pulling the kingdom down. Somebody who refuses to pull their weight. Somebody who's using their position within the administration for their own self aggrandizement and self gain and self benefit and they're pulling down the system with them. Oh, the anger of the king is gonna be against them. Notice with me Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 26. A wise king, notice, notice. Proverbs 20, 26, a wise king scatters the wicked, scatters the wicked, eschews the wicked, gets the wicked out of away from him and he brings the wheel over them. Lord have mercy. That's what a wise king does. A wise king scatters the wicked away from him. Get away from me. No, you can't be near me. You can't be around my leadership. Proverbs 20 and verse eight. Notice Proverbs 20 and verse eight, same chapter, different verse. The king, a king that sitteth on the throne of judgment, scatters away all evil with his eyes. Wow. You know what that's saying? That's saying that a real wise king with a righteous reputation, where he looks, when he looks at somebody, they'll know instinctively, intuitively, oh, this king ain't going to let me in his kingdom because I know I'm corrupt and he knows it too. <laughs> the king with his eyes can penetrate the mind and the consciousness of individuals who are just trying to hitch a ride. Are y'all with me today? If you got a righteous king, a righteous leader, his eyes will penetrate and let individuals know, listen, if you're going to come this way, you got to come correct or you will be scattered. Yes, point number one, obvious foolishness and wickedness must be removed from positions of power. When somebody does something in your administration and it's something that's wicked, they gotta, they gotta go. You can't leave them in a position of power. That's telling everybody else that you don't care what anybody does, that you just want to, well, you know, whatever. I guess you can do whatever you wanna do. 
mercy. Notice with me, point number two, a leader's rule and longevity is dependent upon righteousness in the kingdom. A leader's rule and longevity is fully dependent upon righteousness in his kingdom. Notice with me, Proverbs 16, verse 12 says, it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness for the throne is established by righteousness. The throne is established by righteousness. So it's an abomination. It's a horrible thing for a king to commit wickedness. His throne is supposed to be established, founded in righteousness. Proverbs 29 verse 14 says this, the king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The king that righteously judge, that righteously judges the poor, the impoverished, and those who have need of their basic needs. The king who righteously judges those situations, their throne will be established, God says, forever. Proverbs 29, 14. Notice with me, Psalm Division 101, verses 3 through 8. Psalm Division 101, verses 3 through 8. Here's what David said in terms of leadership. This is what he said in terms of God and his leadership and in terms of what God desires. Notice with me, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. This is David as king now. This is what he says. I'm not going to set a wicked thing before my own eyes. I'm just not going to let it happen. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Verse four, a forward heart shall depart from me, a rebellious heart. That's what forward means. A loudly obstinate obstinate and rebellious heart. That's what he's talking about. Somebody who refuses to follow the rules and is loud about it. That's what forward means. You ever meet anybody like that? They don't want to follow anybody's rules. They're not following any instructions and they letting you know that they're not doing it and they want others to follow them. That's a forward person. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person, David said. Who so privately, who so privately slanders his neighbor, him I'm going to cut off. The one who talks about me behind other people, who talks about somebody else to me behind other people's backs, he said, they're going to get out of my administration. When I hear people talking about other folk to me behind their back, oh, they're not going to be a part of my administration. That's what David said. (laughs) Him that has a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer to be with me. People who live in pride, arrogance, fantasy land, where everything they do is perfect and gold and, 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 and absolutely don't have any flaws in my life. Oh, you can't, you can't be near me. If you don't know what your flaws are, you can't be anywhere around me. It tells me that you're not self-aware. Come on, say amen. And I don't have time to have to, have to be self-aware for you. <laughs> Come on, say amen. You need to be self-aware for yourself. Come on, say amen. Verse six, he says, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. And he that works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that tells lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will, man, you know what? Just, just that, just that verse right there. Verse seven. (laughs) Anybody who tells lies, anybody who works deception, they're not going to be in my administration. They're not going to be among the positions of power in my, under my authority. Not going to do it. Could you imagine if we had a world like that? (laughs) Woo, how much better it would be. What if our government was that way? If it really honestly was that way? 
we're living in a world today where we know that our leaders lie. We know it. It's it's an, it's an obvious thing. And nobody cares. Nobody says anything. It's like, oh, okay, well, it's almost like it's a prerequisite to getting a position of power in America. You just lie and you get it. <laughs> David said, if anybody has deceiving ways, if anybody tells a lie in front of me, they're not going to stand in front of me very long. They're not going to be around me. I'm, listen, man, I'm telling you, man, lies and deception is it's, it's, it's the worst. It's just the worst thing to sit up here and lie. Yesterday, I saw a former official on camera say to a crowd in front of him that nobody is dying anymore from COVID-19. He said, we've beat the disease and it's fine. This guy was a former mayor of a major city in this country. Are you all listening to what I'm saying to you? He's telling people that we're no longer dying from COVID. He actually said it on camera. I mean, what, what kind of world are we living in? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I was flabbergasted. I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised, but I was. It, that is obviously not true. That is ostensibly not true. It, it's empirically not true. And yet you're telling these people, lying to them. Why? What is wrong with you? Are we seriously in this world that deep? We're so politically separated and divided that we're willing to risk people's lives for it? I guess so. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the height of corruption. That's why David said what he said. He said, I can't have people lying in positions of power under my administration. I can't have that happening. Because he sought to be a good king. Notice with me, point number three. We may pray for all our leaders and rulers today. We are asked, we are called to pray for all our leaders and rulers today. Notice with me in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 says this, Exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. Do you see the word there? Honesty, that's verse two of, of First Timothy chapter two. That they may lead a, that they may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Ladies and gentlemen, honesty is a key to the throne. Honesty and truth is an absolute for the throne to be established. You must have honesty. You cannot establish a throne on lies. It's not going to last long. It cannot last long because lies will always be exposed. Am I right or am I wrong about it? We found that out last week. And I'm not gonna mention it, but you know, with many of you know what I'm talking about. Lies will be exposed. It seems like every week lies are being exposed by different people all over the world. Different lies are being exposed. All the, I don't know why people lie because it, it doesn't work. <laughs> it, it's amazing to me that people continue to consistently lie today in a world that we have cameras everywhere. <laughs> we have 
uh, uh, you know, recording of every keystroke that you do on your computer. You you can't lie and not and get away. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're going to be found out. Now, if you're found out and people don't care, that's another issue. But you are going to be found out in your lies. You cannot establish an authority, a leadership, a rulership, a throne, an administration, a government on lies. You can't do it. It's not going to work. It's not going to last. For this is good and acceptable, God says, in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, God, uh, here's what Paul is saying here in 1 Timothy chapter 2. We should pray for all our authorities, all men in leadership, all women in leadership, that they might come to a knowledge of the true God. See, that's the ultimate goal. We want everybody to know who God is so that they can make a choice, a conscientious choice to serve him, to be in his will. Amen. To be godly as God is godly, to be holy as he is holy. Somebody say amen. This is the reason why we pray. We pray that they would come to know God for themselves because we desire like God that all should be saved and that all should come to repentance, that all should turn their back on their evil ways, and that all should come to the throne of righteousness of Christ. That's what our desire is. That's why we pray for our leaders. Whether we like them or not, we still pray for them because we want them to be saved because they're human beings. They're our brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not. Somebody say amen. But there is, ladies and gentlemen, there is a righteous kingdom with a righteous ruler that is fully established in honesty and truth. Somebody say hallelujah today. <laughs> yes, there is. There is one. <laughs> there is there is an honest ruler. Yes, there is. There is an honest kingdom. Somebody say hallelujah. There is a kingdom of truth, righteousness, justice, purity, and faith. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. And the city of God, the city of God, this is my last point. The city of God is a righteous city because he is a righteous king. <laughs> the city's going to follow the king. Huh? The city's going to follow the king. The nation is going to follow the leader. However the leader is, that's what the nation's going to be. Come on, say amen out here. However, ladies and gentlemen, the church is, that's how the, however the church leader is, that's how the church is going to be. However the church leadership is, whoever they are, that's how the church is going to be. If they're unrighteous, it's going to be an unrighteous church. But if they're holy, if they're pure, if they're living in honesty, purity, and truth, hallelujah, if they're seeking the Lord on a daily basis, if they're watching PTPOG every day, somebody say amen. Oh, they're going to be established in truth and righteousness. And the city of God is a righteous city because God is a righteous God. He's a righteous king. Psalm division five verses four and five. Psalm division five verses four and five. Here's what the psalmist says in Psalm five verses four and five. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness. I love this. The psalmist says, you're not a God who has pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil even dwell with thee the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. That's God. That's my God. That's, that's your God. Somebody say amen. That's my God. My God 
will not allow wickedness to stand before his countenance. He's not going to allow it to happen. He's not going to allow evil to dwell with him. Can you say amen today? God roots out the dross. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to be rooted out. I want to be planted in. <laughs> Can you say amen? Can you say amen today? I don't want to be rooted out. I want to be planted in. I want to be implanted in the kingdom. Somebody say amen. I want to be transplanted in the kingdom. I want to get out of all these kingdoms of the world, and I want to be in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God because his throne is established on truth and righteousness, holiness, purity, and faith. Speaking of Christ, Jesus as ruler and priest and king, Paul writes this in Hebrews chapter one and verse eight. He says it this way. This is how he describes Christ. But unto the son, he has, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Jesus is our king. Can you say amen? Jesus is my ruler. Jesus, hallelujah. He's my confidant. He is my king my real king, hallelujah. And the reason why is because he rules with a scepter of righteousness because his throne is established in rightness. Can you say amen today? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in the last chapter or I should say the last book of the Bible, next to the last chapter, it's chapter 21 of Revelation. Revelation 21 and verse 27. In speaking of the city of God, the kingdom of God, when it returns to the earth, here is what the prophetic vision of John tells us about that city. Here's what it tells us as we close today. It says, and there shall in no wise enter into this city anything that defiles, neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, they shall enter in. There are not going to be any abominations in that city. There's not going to be any liars in that city. There's not, are you all listening to me? There's not going to be anything that defiles or causes wickedness to take place in that city. It will not be allowed because the king is going to remove the dross from the silver. The king, hallelujah, is going to remove the wickedness and corruption from out of his ranks because the king is righteous because he's Christ and he rules with a scepter of righteousness. Are you longing for that day? I'm longing for that day. I'm longing for that kingdom. We talked about that on last night at our prayer meeting. If you missed it, you missed a good one. We had an awesome prayer meeting last night where we talked about the kingdom of heaven. We talked about the kingdom of God and what it will be like and what it is that God truly desires for us and how he wants us to be and how life will be for us when we finally leave this sin-sickened earth behind. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a pure and righteous kingdom that has a pure, holy, and loving, righteous king. His name is Jesus. And that kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And he desires and wants you and I to be a part of it. He gives us an invitation to become a member of that kingdom. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that something? He says you can let loose of your membership here in America or in Australia, or in Canada, or in India, or wherever it is that you are part of. He says, you can become a part of my kingdom because I take all comers. All you have to do is trust in the king. 
All you have to do is submit to the king. That's all you got to do. It's not hard. It's not difficult. Just acknowledge that he is king of kings and Lord of lords. And you can be a part of the kingdom of the living God. Can you say amen today? Let's pray. Father, Father in heaven, I pray and ask, Lord, that you would make us all members of your kingdom. I ask, Lord, that you would uh, cause us to live in your righteousness. I pray, Father, that you would remove the dross from our lives, the unwanted parts of us that, Lord, are not in alignment with your will. And I pray and ask that, Father, you would help us to live in truth, honesty, purity, faith, love, kindness, patience, humility. Lord, help us to be like you so that we can live like you and live with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, God be with you. God bless you. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that this message has uh, invigorated you and given you strength today. If it has, please like it and share it on your Facebook page. And if you haven't already, please join our ministry family. Just type in hashtag PTPOG, practicing the presence of God inside of your Facebook app, inside of the search engine, and it will pull up a purple icon. Click on it and please join us. We would love to have you be a part. If you're watching this by way of our YouTube channel, we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you so much for stopping by. Leave a comment down below. We would love to respond to you. Have a good and awesome day today. May the Lord watch between you and I while we're, you and me, I should say, while we're absent one from another. God bless. We'll see you on tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 Central, 6.30 Mountain, 5.30 Pacific. Pastor Michael Hayes signing off. Have a great and marvelous day. Bye-bye.